Hi, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of our Dynamic Programming interview series. Dynamic Programming, often abbreviated as DP, is a topic that many people find intimidating. In fact, whether or not you can solve DP problems is sometimes seen as the dividing line between a strong programmer and an average one. Sounds scary, right? Don't worry. We're going to start with the simplest possible example and walk through it step by step so you can really understand what DP is all about. Let me start with a classic old puzzle. Imagine there's a pair of rabbits that start reproducing in the first month. Starting from the second month, each pair of rabbits gives birth to a new pair every month, and let's say these rabbits never die. So, after one year, how many pairs of rabbits will there be? It sounds like a math riddle, but this problem is actually based on one of the most famous sequences in mathematics, the Fibonacci sequence. Not only is it a classic in math history, it also shows up a lot in coding interviews. It's a perfect place to start learning dynamic programming. So what is the Fibonacci sequence? It's actually really simple. The zeroth term is zero, the first term is one, and starting from the second term, each number is just the sum of the previous two. In other words, f of n equals f of n minus one plus f of n minus two. For example, f zero is zero, f one is one, so f two is zero plus one, which is one. Then f three is one plus one, which is two. After that, the sequence continues, three, five, eight, 13, 21, and so on. You might think this is just a simple pattern, but it actually shows up everywhere, in math, in algorithms, and even in nature. You'll find it in flower petals, population growth, and much more. Now let's imagine you're in a job interview. The interviewer asks you to write a function that returns the nth Fibonacci number. Your first instinct might be to use recursion, right? Let's try the most straightforward recursive approach. The code looks clean, and it's functionally correct. So what's the issue? Well, if n is small, say 20 or 30, it runs pretty quickly. But once you try to compute fib of 40, you'll notice it takes over 10 seconds to finish. And if you go up to fib of 45 or 50, the delay becomes painfully long. Why does this happen? Let's take a closer look at how the function actually runs. Behind the scenes, it builds a recursive call tree. When you call fib of 40, it triggers calls to fib of 39 and fib of 38. Then fib of 39 calls fib of 38 and fib of 37. Now, fib of 38 is being calculated twice. Keep going, and you'll see fib of 37, fib of 36, and many other subproblems getting recomputed over and over again. The bigger n gets, the worse this duplication becomes, and the more time your computer wastes doing the same work. This brings us to our first key concept, overlapping subproblems. That means the same subproblem is being solved multiple times during recursion. It's not efficient and wastes both time and computing resources. So how do we fix that? This is where dynamic programming comes in. The core idea is simple. If you've already solved a subproblem once, just save the result. Then, the next time you need it, look it up instead of recalculating. This technique is called memoization. To use it, we just add a cache to our original recursive function. Let's take a look at how the updated code works. Now, each unique value of n is only computed once, then cached in memo. After that, any time we need it again, we just grab it straight from the dictionary. This brings the time complexity down from exponential to linear, and the speedup is dramatic. This is our first dynamic programming approach, recursion with memoization. It's also called the top-down method because we start with the main problem and work our way down, breaking it into smaller and smaller pieces until we hit the base case. But in interviews, many interviewers will ask you to write a solution without using recursion. That brings us to the bottom-up approach, also known as tabulation. The idea is simple. Instead of working backward from Fn, we start from the smallest cases and build our way up. We already know that F0 is 0 and F1 is 1. From there, we compute F2, then F3, then F4, and so on, each value based on the two previous ones. To do this, we use an array, often called DP, to store the intermediate results. This way, there's no recursion involved at all. The time complexity is still O n, but since we've eliminated the overhead of recursive calls, the code runs even faster. And we can take it a step further. 
by optimizing the space. If you look closely, you'll notice that each new value only depends on the two before it. So instead of storing the whole array, we only need two variables to keep track of the last two results. With that, we still have on time complexity, but we reduce space usage from on to o1, also known as constant space. In practice, this is the most efficient way to calculate Fibonacci numbers. Now, besides overlapping subproblems, there's another key property in dynamic programming, optimal substructure. This means the optimal solution to the overall problem can be built directly from the optimal solutions of its subproblems. In the Fibonacci case, f of n equals f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. As long as f of n minus 1 and f of n minus 2 are correctly computed, we can combine them to get the correct f of n. That's optimal substructure. In more complex problems, the combination might not be as simple as addition. It could involve picking the best option or merging different cases, but the principle is the same. The optimal answer is made of optimal subsolutions. So, does that mean every recursive problem can be solved with dynamic programming? Actually, no. Take binary search, for example. You're looking for a target value in a sorted array. At each step, you divide the array and choose which direction to go. Even though you're dealing with subarrays, there are no overlapping subproblems. Each path is unique and visited only once. And there's no optimal substructure either, because the final answer doesn't come from combining multiple subresults. Instead, it's all about following the right decision path. So, binary search doesn't meet the two key conditions of dynamic programming, and DP just isn't the right tool for that kind of problem. Let's wrap things up. Today, we covered four different ways to solve the Fibonacci problem. First, we had plain recursion. It's simple to write, but really inefficient. Second, we added memoization, which gives us a top-down dynamic programming solution. Third, we switched to a bottom-up approach, also called tabulation, where we build the answer from smaller problems. And finally, we optimize the space by using just two variables, which is usually the best option in practice. Along the way, we also talked about the two core properties that define dynamic programming, overlapping subproblems and optimal substructure. A problem needs to have both of these in order for DP to be the right tool. And once you understand this way of thinking, you'll start to see it in many classic interview questions, like climbing stairs, house robber, coin change, string segmentation, longest subsequence, and even zero-one knapsack. Each problem is different, and the implementation may vary, but the core logic stays the same. In the next videos, we'll go through all of these step by step, so you can fully master dynamic programming and confidently handle any variation in interviews. If you found this video helpful, feel free to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.